Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to create a custom and highly reusable button in Swift UI in just a few minutes. And if you're just getting started with Swift UI at the moment, have a look at my new Udemy course to get a project-based introduction for just $12.99 in April 2020, just have a look at the link in the video description below. If you're interested to learn more about this course, just watch the next one and a half minutes. If not, feel free to skip ahead. With Swift UI, you will build better apps with less code. It makes app development a lot faster, simpler, and even works across all Apple platforms. Swift UI gives you automatic support for dynamic type, dark mode, localization, and a lot more. I am Brian Edmund, and I've been working as a developer and trainer, especially in the Apple ecosystem, for almost a decade now. This course wants to bring you beyond the standard tutorials of displaying some local or web-based data in a list. It wants to address the questions that arise when creating an app with SwiftUI for the first time and cover topics that will enable you to understand app development with this new tool set and thus make you feel comfortable continue the journey of exploring SwiftUI on your own. I'm going to provide you with all the knowledge you need to create your own SwiftUI apps in no time. In our sample project, we'll build a cool user interface, use UIKit classes like the map view and SwiftUI. We are going to explore the most important property wrappers that are mostly responsible for the reactive magic of SwiftUI. We're also going to create custom shapes, animate them, store data, and so much more. Building this app from start to finish will give you a head start when working on your own projects with SwiftUI. To get the most out of this course, you should have a solid knowledge about Swift 5, and you should also know your way around Xcode. Please feel free to take a look around the course description and have a look at the preview videos. I'd be very happy to see you inside. And to get started, I have already opened up Xcode. I'm going to create a single view application, just call this maybe color button. Going to hit next and create that on my desktop. Now, if we want to start creating this button, let's maybe have a look at the anatomy of this button. So first of all, what we have seems to be a rounded rectangle shape as a base for this button. We also have some text, that simple, and we are filling this button by a certain percentage with this color. And we're going to deal with that later, but for now we can start with the fact that we have this uh, rounded rectangle in the background and that we have uh, a text in the foreground. So this is what we're going to start with. Um, and we will keep in mind that we want to position something on the left. So let's minimize that and have a look at that later. Um, and before I'm going to start, I'm going to add some colors that I've already prepared here, a background color, a blue color, and a red color, just like this color set. Just go with whatever color you like, go with the standard colors, everything is fine. So let's select our content view, press Command N on the keyboard and create a new Swift UI view. I'm going to call that special button and create that. And then we'll also resume our canvas here so that we can see what we're doing. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, something like that. And um, as I said, we're going to start with a rounded rectangle. Um, so we're initializing that with a corner radius, going to go with five here. And we're of course filling everything because we haven't defined a frame yet. And measuring the buttons or uh, coming from um, the buttons that we've already seen, I'm going to go with a width of 150 and a height off just 55. And of course, everything that fits, fits your needs is right here. And we're going to go with a foreground color. Um, I'm going to use my background color here that I've defined for this modifier. So I just press Command Shift L on my keyboard, went to the color selector here, and I can just select uh, what I really want. I'm going to go with this grayish color. And now since I want to position something right on top of 
my rectangle here. I cannot use an horizontal stack nor a vertical stack. We'll have to use a Z stack here. So I'm just going to press command on my keyboard, going to click on my rounded rectangle, going to select V stack and just going to replace the V with a Z. So now we have our, v st our Z stack, of course, and we're going to define some text I'm going to go with um, my button. All right, so we have some text here that maybe should be bold, so a lot better already. And maybe we also want to make this a little bit more customizable to work with that later. So let's define a button text as a property for this struct. I'm going to go with my button for now. And also let's maybe define a button color also, here I'm going to initialize that with my um, red color that we're going to use later. Um, and that's it. So now, let's have a look at our image again. And let's see how we can do this. Actually, what we need to do is define kind of like this shape. We need, on the left-hand side, we need this rounded corner, but then we need to cut it. And, and when I thought about um, actually getting this, um, I thought about actually recreating this whole button as a shape, but then just use a portion of that. And there is even a modifier that can do that for us of shape, which is called trim. So we're going to just use that in a second. But first of all, let's define this shape um, that we're interested in. And I'm going to call that, although we're drawing the um, the whole button or the whole rounded rectangle shape. I am going to just call that left corner. And this is of type shape. And in a shape, what we need to create such a shape is a path. And here we'll simply return the path that we're interested in. But we, of course, we have to create one. So let's create a path variable here, initialize that with path. And then we can just tell our path what it should do. And what we want to do is add a rounded rect um, in a rectangle that we define here in rect with a corner radius of five. So here we have to supply our function with a CG size. So let's quickly do that with a width and height five five. And that's our rounded rect. And then we will simply return our path. Uh, we can't see anything yet, but uh, just keep on waiting for a second, resuming our canvas here on the right and scrolling up to our body of the special button. We're now going to create a left corner. And um, if we now fill that um, with a color, let's say this is going to be the button color, um, then we already used our button color. And we can also maybe give it a frame um, with a width and height that just matches our rounded rack that we've already created. So height 55. But what we can do now is actually use the trim modifier. And as you can see, this function trims the shape by a fractional amount based on its representation as a path. So let's go from zero to one, for example. And if we have a look at that, we actually fill everything. And if we now play around with the numbers a little bit, so, so let's say we go from 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, then you can see that this works in a circular way. And I'm actually going to go with 4, 1, 0 0.41, because this is a good value that I've decided to use. And for the 2 value, let's maybe do the same thing the other way around. Let's go with 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, um, and there is something missing, so let's maybe go with 0.59. And this is what our button looks like. So we already achieved exactly what we wanted with just a few lines of code. Now to use our button, let's go into content view. And here we have two ways of actually using this button. Let's maybe create an horizontal, a horizontal stack. Um, so I'm just going to put this text into horizontal stack to create two versions of our button. So first of all, I'm going to create a special button. We're going to initialize it with a button text of function one. The color, again, pressing command shift L on my keyboard, I'm going to go with the blue color, um, should give us a nice looking 
button already, and here it is. And um, then we also have our second button. Let's maybe go with the special button again and just call it uh, function2. And we're going to go with the red color in this case. So if we have a look at that again, we have our two buttons. And uh, what seems to be wrong is the actual button text. So let's have a quick look at our button text. And indeed, we have not replaced our text here with the button text property of our special button struct. And now we have just quickly solved that, just adding the button text property here in line 20 of our special button. Let's return back to our content view. And what we have now are just actually two views uh, that are not clickable in any way. And to change that, what we can do is uh, either we're going to add a tab gesture recognizer on one of these buttons. So that's really simple. Let's use that for our first um, for our first button. So we're just going to add an on tap gesture recognizer or on tap gesture uh, modify here to our special button. Can okay, maybe just use print hello function one and in uh, for our second button, we're going to actually just build a button. Um, that has an action and a label. And for the action, we're going to go with print hello function two. And for the label, we're just going to add a closure here as well. And we can just cut our special button here, paste it right there. Um, and with that, we have just added our special button view as a label for our button. So these are just two very simple ways to achieve that result. And I'm going to run this in the simulator now to actually have a look at how this works and if we get our output and also to show you how these um, look when used with a tab gesture recognizer or as a button. And here we are. So here we have our tab gesture recognizer and I just press it and we get hello function one. So this works. Um, but if I go with function two, I of course have um, this nice little animation or this indicator that I'm pressing it. And we're also going to get a blue text because now this is obviously a button. And if I don't want this to be blue, um, then we're simply going to go back to our special button and just add or change the foreground color here to, for example, black. And then we can have a look at that in both uh, our canvas here should get a black um, color. And also in the simulator, we should have a similar result. So as you can see, we both times have a black text color, but for the button, as a button, we get button behavior. And with the tab gesture recognizer, we just simply get um, the result that we would expect from a tap gesture recognizer. And that's how easy it is to actually create your own custom buttons and that you can come up with your cool button creations now yourself. I thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to not miss any future tutorials. Have a look at my new SwiftUI course in the video description below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.